silence fills the streets of Century 21. The roads empty, not a soul in sight until a biker rides by. Since the storm, it's just it's deserted in here. Joe DiGiovanni rides his bike around here four or five times a week, seeing life stopped in a single moment. It's just like a bad omen, bad luck. I mean, the tornado, you clean up after that, and then boom, Ian hits, and I don't know, I don't know what the windup is going to be because most of these um, homes in here look like they're, they're not really repairable. Since the hurricane, I ride through here three, four times, at least three, four times a week. The most you see is somebody just take carrying some stuff out and putting it in a trunk of their car and going. Okay. One of those somebodies is Kathleen Mitchell. Yes, we were here for the tornado. It sounded like a, a freight train, and the, the bedroom I was in was under the carport at the time, and then all of a sudden it was, it was bright white because the carport was gone. Michelle Carneau was visiting her mom here in southwest Florida a year ago today when the tornado gave this community its first glimpse at disaster. I thought, you know, by now if all the tornado damage would be repaired and I'd have my beautiful home again in a community I loved. And instead, it's all gone. To Mitchell's surprise, one major storm wasn't enough. During Hurricane Ian, her daughter was 1,200 miles away, waiting on a text. She's fine. She's alive. That's all I know. <laughs> That's all that matters. That's, that is absolutely all that matters. Her mom's all right, but Mitchell's community and way of life? No, I never expected anything that would just you know, demolish not, not only my home, but the whole community. You know, 320 homes. Just unlivable. June 19th is the date when everyone has to be gone and you either turn your title over to the landowners or, you know, somebody's got to remove your house. 